Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing a very uh, uh, touchy top topic to some people, which is fundamental analysis. And fundamental analysis um, is an approach that I use as well as technicals. But I received this um, comment from a watcher of one of my videos and they uh, felt so strongly about um, fundamental analysis, they decided to comment and they said, using mainstream media's news, for your fundamental analysis is the worst disservice you can do to yourself. Not only has that information been priced in, it's also stale as F. Um, that's why you should only do technical analysis. And there's a lot of myths surrounding, again, fundamental analysis, mainstream media. Um, and even if, um, you know, the, the news has been priced in and, and the data has been priced in already, doesn't mean that you can't trade it or it's untradeable. So I'm going to pretty much go over, um, you know, my thoughts and really kind of dispel a lot of these um, these wrong narratives surrounding, um, you know, the media, what's been priced in, what hasn't been priced in, the fact that you can get ahead of the news. And a lot of times you just have to be a bit patient. And I'll give some examples and a recent example that happened today with oil. So um, looking at understanding priced in what is priced in everything that is known fundamentally about an asset is priced in so um uh you know what that means is that you know if you've got an asset be it you know a commodity it could be exchange rate could be bonds it could be a uh, stock um you know it could be a car or or, or or property or a home right everything that is known about that um particular asset right by people um, will be priced in yeah so if you're talking about for example it could be a ferrari right everything that is known about that ferrari is priced in and it's given a price and a value and people are going to accept right that price and that value to varying degrees so you know depending it could be a hundred thousand it could be a hundred and fifty thousand it could be a hundred and twenty thousand but there will be a typical um range i guess as to what um you know uh, buyers and sellers are willing to do business uh, for that said asset now institutions and, and when we trade institutions have this have um, uh, the same approach right and they have different valuations which are known as fair value auctions and um, they have different valuations um, uh, when it comes to pricing in a said asset so let's say for example uh, we talk about forex because i'm a forex trader and so the euro dollar currently is um priced in at somewhere around the 10 you know 109 right now everything that is known about the euro and the dollar right the current price would be 109 but what um you know banks will typically do is they will say some banks will say well 109 would be you know a fair value price and some banks might actually say you know the one uh tenths right might be in fact fair value price some banks might say 108 yeah might be the fair value price but typically it will be in what is known as I guess a range right or an auction what buyers and sellers of said euro dollar are what they think you know the value of that exchange rate should be Priced in doesn't mean it's going to be one price. Typically, it's usually a um, a range of prices. Yeah. So, even though let's say you know data comes out, um, you know you go into Forex Factory and you're looking at, for example, something like a uh, I don't know GDP data that comes out and then it comes out, um, you know, as uh, as expected, as forecasted. And if price goes, let's say it was going up like this. Yeah, it's going higher and higher and then all of a sudden you know it comes out as expected and then the price um you know drops a bit yeah it goes down to maybe you know 10850s the 108s traders will then say oh well you know buy the news sell sell the rumor but what they don't realize is that in fact that news has been priced in between potentially the 108s and in fact the 110s and then, you know, a week or two later, you might see price do something like this and go higher and then, you know, stay around this. If there is no new news or nothing is expected to change in the future, because the market is always forward thinking in terms of what is future value. And so whereas 
retail tend to focus on what is happening today and what is happening, you know, um, you know, what has just happened and even, you know, trying to think about what might happen tomorrow. Financial institutions are really focused on what's coming, you know, not only today, but they're thinking, always thinking about what future value is. And to kind of illustrate this point, there's an example on um, on Citibank, right? So this is one of their latest reports uh, from last week. It's probably going to be updated at some point uh, this week. And um, if you go down to the technical levels, yeah, uh, supply, um, sorry, support uh, two, support one, resistance one, resistance two. And what they're really saying there is, for example, for focus on, I guess, the euro dollar, right? Is that they're saying that between support two and support one which is 105 to 107s yeah are where the auction may potentially start yeah where the, where the bargain prices are at the bottom end of the auction and resistance one resistance two are where the top end of the um, auction is um, currently right or where they think those are the areas that are probably going to be expensive because again if we're talking about auctions and let me just you know go down a little bit I can kind of use my drawing tool yeah is what they're saying is is that price is either going to be around the 105s let's say uh or 107s and 105s yeah this is a price chart yeah it's the price chart or it's going to be between the 109s and the 110s yeah so they're saying that price should want to auction somewhere between these areas of course nobody knows not even the banks themselves because there are many banks right that are doing different valuations and putting different amount different amounts of money right and capital uh to the market and so um this is their interpretation of what value is and the only way that value um then tends to go either to the upside or to the downside and break out of that fair value auction or what is known as a range is if something different occurs right as if you know new information is priced into or not priced into the market and the market then and the banks and financial institutions have to then price that into um you know the uh, the current valuation right and so um you can consider priced in yeah as a fair value auction or a ranging market state yeah what is known uh, by uh, many retail traders as a ranging market state and so if you understand that you have a you know it's been priced in but there are going to be different valuations in terms of you know maybe around 100 to 200 pip you know valuation right sometimes a bit more then what do you do you just apply um you know uh trading strategies yeah uh, that are more uh, fair value auction or range focused rather than trying to apply a trend trading strategy to a uh, a priced in or ranging market state right and that's one another problem that retail traders um uh, do is that they apply the wrong strategies to the wrong market state and they always will because if you don't know uh, this information and you're thinking that you're expect always expecting the market to trend at some point not realizing actually in fact fundamentals will tell you whether things are being priced in or whether they're not being priced in or unlikely to be priced in then you're always going to be on the wrong side right more often than not and ultimately when things are not priced in Right, because there are times and moments where um, a new information comes out, the market has to get ahead of the curve um, and start to price that in. Now, you know that's where you start to see a, a trend, right? So you can either see a trend to the downside, right, where we see start to see breakouts, yeah, start to happen, and then what ends up happening is, in fact, the market. And you can go on a price chart and see this: is that the market will then value. And start to value the asset a lot lower right something like that and that that might be let's say between you know 105s and maybe 101s yeah whereas before this was like maybe 105s to maybe 109s or 110s then that might be 105s to 101s with the new information right and they'll price it in and then that will be the auction where again 
financial institutions, some might think that the 101s might be a bargain area. Some might think the 102s, some might think actually the 105s are decent, etc. So that is really what priced in um, really means. And any time that mark, um, you know, news is not priced in, when you see a trend and a massive trend um, happen, because normally that's going to be hindsight bias, right? Traders who typically just trade uh, technical analysis won't see the trend until it's actually happened, right? They'll then they'll start to look back and go, "Oh yeah, that was a trend," right? After a potential auction, yeah, when markets went sideways, not realizing that in fact fundamentally maybe you should have been buying here anticipating the change and then when prices go to the upside they're late to the party but fundamentally you knew you should have been buying you know down here and around these areas uh, here as these represented bargain prices um if you understood what was uh you know what could potentially happen with you know for example uh, you know trade ideas that you develop and understanding like i said the fundamental side of things now um you know looking at trends is when you're looking at the market actually looking to price in the new valuation yeah of what they think the asset is worth until it finds a valuation and then you get again that is being the market has already priced in what is known about the uh, asset right and let's look at actually um, an oil example. So today we had um, oil come out and uh, oil, $100 oil to tighter markets. Here's what analysts see after OPEC uh, shock cut. So um, yesterday uh, or over the weekend, there was a shock um, OPEC cut to um, the supply of oil and Goldman raises its Brent price forecast by $5 to $95 a barrel. Um, and OPEC not afraid of major US shell oil um, supply response Bank of America. And so ultimately, there was a surprise uh, shock, right, in the fact that OPEC have now decided to um, to cut oil supply or the OPEC uh, members. And so uh, Goldman Sachs say that um, uh, OPEC has very significantly or very significant pricing power relative to the past, analysts including Dan's Dravin and Callum Bruce said today's price cut is consistent with their new doctrine to act preemptively because they can without significant losses um, um, in market share. And this combined with the extension of Russian production cuts led the Wall Street giant to raise its Brent oil forecast to $95 a barrel uh, for December this year from $90 earlier and 100 for December 2024 from um, from 95 right and so fundamentally you understand or you should understand that oil is driven by supply and demand right the more demand you have um is the higher prices go and the more supply you have the lower prices go and so this surprise cut will in reduce supply right and if demand stays the same then obviously prices should uh, go higher now this is today's news yeah, this was today's news, 3rd of April, I'm recording this on the 3rd of April. And so this is also from mainstream media. Now, does this mean that because this news has come out that that's it, it's over now? Do you know what I mean? It's been priced in, um, you know, this is you're doing yourself a disservice by reading, um, you know, this type of article, right? It's already too late. And the answer I would say is absolutely not. Um, what you have to do now is understanding um, what the mainstream media has reported and what, in fact, the analysts are reporting, right? So you can, if you go further down, it's not just Goldman Sachs giving their opinion, by the way. There's Bank of America pretty much saying the same thing. Um, you know, Citigroup, RBC, Capital Markets, LLC, ANZ. Uh, you've got Commonwealth Bank of Australia, Scandinaviska. I'm not going to butcher that, but that's another, it sounds like a Scandinavian bank, um, uh, Vander Insights as well, right? They're all pretty much saying that, um, you know, uh, prices should pretty much, you know, go higher for oil. And so fundamentally things have changed. Now, 
what do you do, right? Do you just give up and say, well, it's been priced in? Well, in fact, it hasn't been priced in because ultimately we've just read that potentially you could see prices go um, a lot higher, right? So maybe around the 95s and some are even speculating that prices could go to 100, right? So 100 would be, you know, somewhere around here, the highs, right? And 95s could be somewhere around here. Right now we're at 84s. Uh, so what do you do as a, um, as a trader who thinks that the news has already been priced in, yeah? You're not going to do anything, right? You're going to say, oh, it's too late probably not even going to read the news, right? You're going to be totally blind to the fact. But if you're a fundamental trader and you understand that now is an opportunity to try to get on board while the banks are all pricing in, because remember, this hasn't been priced in yet. This is a surprise from OPEC. So oil hasn't been priced in yet. And they think that it should be priced in, you know, to the 95s to now the, the 100s in the, in the future. Yeah, by December, what are you going to do? best thing to do is to wait for pullbacks at some point because there will be pullbacks right with the prices go higher right and then come lower and then every time prices make a new high pullbacks you know look like bargain prices right now how it's going to get there who knows it can come all the way down here but what you do know is that or you should um, always remember that price can come down but this just means that you're buying for a cheaper price yeah that's all this is and um, again, you would never have known this if you didn't A, watch mainstream media and B, I guess, watch my video um, and understand really how um, the markets typically work. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, um, I would say you really have to um, understand how the market does work and how it, you know, prices in and value isn't, um, present every day right it's these opportunities don't necessarily come around every single day as much as we would like them to they don't but when the opportunity arises and these things do happen then we have to be ready for them and um it's a, a no-brainer now to look for you know pullbacks in oil right and so really going back to the uh, the statement you know about fundamental analysis uh, doing yourself the worst disservice you can um, and the, the fact that the information is priced in and it's being stale, um, I don't know. I don't know um, if this is if this would be considered uh, stale news. I guess when it reaches up ninety five, you know, a hundred dollars a barrel. If it does, because there's no guarantee, of course, anything can happen in the future. But if it does, then yes, then I'd probably say then that would be stale. You'd be late to the party, right? But while prices are at the eighty five or eighty four level, yeah any pullbacks would be considered buying opportunities and you're riding the wave with the financial institutions who are now attempting to price in the new information yeah into uh, into oil all right into the cost of uh, oil you know per barrel so yeah that's um that's pretty much it and that's all i really wanted to say um hopefully now you understand how this works or at least have a basic understanding as to how this works and why you really should um, apply a fundamental analysis. Read the news, of course, not all news is good news and not all news is, um, you know, worth reading, but you have to kind of filter through the nonsense in order to make some sense. And so um, not every single article is going to be uh, useful, but there are some gems in there um, out there in the uh, on the internet and um, and once you get that and once you get those regular um, and subscribe to those regular publications and you know watch those analysts um, and what they're forecasting and what's happening then you can start to get an idea as to how to you know uh, trade alongside and along with the banks rather than um, just um, accepting the fate that you know you can never um, you know be ahead of the curve with them because you can and we are um, a lot of the times in trading 180 so yeah that's pretty much what I wanted to say hope you enjoyed the video all the best and until the next one